Hello everyone. Welcome to this episode or session of webinar on design and development of massive open online courses. This is session number 10. Yes. Now that means we are almost near the completion. <laughs> so, welcome everyone to this session. Today and with me, we have Professor Feng Sun Fu, who is my co-host from University of Malaysia, Sabah. And we have our esteemed guest, Dr. Nathaniel Ostas Siviski. I don't know, uh, Nathaniel, apologies. I hope I did correctly this time. Dr. Nathaniel is Associate Professor at Athabasca University, the Canada's open university. Dr. Nathaniel has over 20 years of experience internationally in Australia and in Canada, in both secondary education, teacher education, and in higher education settings. Using technology and distance education is his basic expertise. Over the years, Dr. Nathaniel has been part of several massive open online courses. The first one, as I understand, was learning online, learning to learn online. The second one, or probably the, the two MOOCs that he is associated with me is Introduction to Technology Enabled Learning and Blended Learning Practice. So he has wide experience in design and development of MOOCs and particularly all the three different three MOOCs that I gave reference to has been offered several times and thousands of learners have gone through these courses. One particular thing that I would like to emphasize about uh, Dr. Nathaniel, that he has been one of the you know, most sought after teacher or a MOOC teacher. Uh, the, the feedback that we receive he, his name appears pre predominantly in all those feedbacks because of his ability to engage with learners at different levels. He creates interesting scenarios and creates the engagement and motivation that learners or participants in the MOOCs uh, are able to remember and Therefore, they thank Dr. Nathaniel profusely for the contribution he makes. So that's something I thought I must share with you because today's session is about the experience of a MOOC teacher. So Dr. Nathaniel is going to talk about his experience of different MOOCs that he has designed and delivered. Welcome Dr. Nathaniel to this session. Today we have people from around the world, but most participants in this session comes from University of Malaysia, Sabah. With that, I request uh, Dr. Fong to have a few words. Yes, thank you Dr. Sanjaya and greetings to everybody around the world and especially uh, Dr. Nathaniel. Uh, it is really a great honor, it is a great privilege uh, for our academic in University of Malaysia Sabah uh, to uh, learn from you, from your vast experience as a practitioner of MOOC. Thank you so much. Over to you, Dr. Nathaniel. Well, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sanjaya and Dr. Fong. Um, it's so nice to be able to present and, yet, and be heard around the world um, for some of the expertise that we all find common. 
Um, I do have slides, but after hearing what Sanjaya uh, commented to me about uh, motivation and such, I'm actually going to um, take one moment. And hi, my name is Dr. Nathaniel Ostashowski, and I'd like to take a moment to show you about motivating learners online. One of the most interesting things I think that I do that is very easy for other people to learn and do is take your cell phone out, record a video, um, and talk about um, uh, an analogy, uh, an interesting fact that is related to the, um, to the material, the content you're delivering. In my case, a lot of times if you look on YouTube, you'll notice I'm talking about farming, agriculture. See you online. That video took me, well, it took me one, one minute uh, and a little bit to make. In about another five minutes, I'd have it edited simply with my name, um, what the title is. And in another five minutes after that, it would be on YouTube. Um, that has got to be one of the most effective bring online learning to your space, your space to online learners um, that I know. Um, and I must say that many people, I, I keep telling people in, in um, many different situations, I didn't practice what I said. I didn't um, stumble. I took my time. Most lecturers can do that. Um, and you, if you want your students to do the same kind of thing, you can do it with Flipgrid. So those are two tips <clears throat> that, you know, really, I think are very easy tools to bring, it, bring uh, the, um, the classroom to the field in my case. So I'm going to start with my slides, I guess, here. <clears throat> and um, so, yeah, um, I've, uh, over the last several weeks, we've been delivering Telmuc 5. And you'll hear a little bit about that as we go on. So I'm going to keep referring back to Telmuc 5, which is uh, Telmuc 6 is coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, so in, in this session today, uh, for the half hour, I'm going to speak about what is generally about MOOCs, online learning and teaching, MOOC teaching and design, and connecting one to hundreds. And that's talking about scalability. Um, MOOCs overall, I've been involved probably since 2009, um, shortly after George Siemens um, had, and uh, Stephen Downs had presented their first cor course. Um, and I actually worked with George just sort of shortly after there. And uh, I had commented to him that, you know, it's, it's pretty spread out, it's very, complicated technology to get into a MOOC situation and and find the materials and such and he said yeah well that's something for people like you to sort out Nathaniel so really since 2009 I've been working with you know what does a good online learner or teacher look like when we scale it up um, when we scale our teaching from one to hundreds um, again 2010, 2012, 2013, lots of interest in MOOCs because there was, uh, at the time I was working in Australia, Curtin University, large online presence, distributed satellite communities um, uh, where they were teaching. And they did have challenges where one lecturer was responsible for speaking to 1,500, that's 1,500 students, and this is paid university courses. And the reason why he was is because he had a team of, of lecturers or tutorial tutorialists who would actually um, contact students. But he, he was responsible for the materials, the grading at the end, the content. So that was one to several hundreds. Um, so, you know, even today, lots of MOOCs still coming, emerging, lots of uh, mostly the upper end universities, technology topics. For some reason, I think technology profs are more interested. Um, but also over the last 10 years, we've really seen some different kinds of, uh, MOOC models emerge. Um, and the one I'm going to speak about today because it is one that I've done, I've been working with as, as a designer for 10 years, is called the iMOOC. Um, and I won't give a lot of information because this session is not really about design. That's a different session. Anyway, again, MOOCs come from a range of X MOOCs, which are really, in a some sense, a very ramped up. Um, uh, media rich kind of textbook online to see MOOCs where pretty much all the interaction and, and even the material is online in very distributed places. And both of those present challenges. Um, over the years of, of my designing MOOCs, I always had argued, and when I was at Curtin University, I was in charge of designing their first three MOOCs 
in 2015. Um, I was always looking at a CMOOC, some of the XMOOC materials and concepts that scale, some of the connections um, and using materials or using techniques that we use in online learning to create a CX, a connectivist um, XMOOC, if you would like. Today, I would say we've done one better. The iMOOC uh, does a little bit better. And when I say, does it do better? The Telmook, as Dr. Sanjaya mentioned, uh, the Telmook is something we've been delivering for 2016, 17, 18, 19. So this is our fifth year, I think, fourth year. Um, we were in a year of design, but um, you can see at the beginning, our, our completion rates and our way to engage learners was a little bit of hit and miss. Um, in, in the first year, you know, we, we got out the material, we got a little bit better in the second delivery. By the fourth delivery early this year, we really, really have our facilitator team um, well instructed and prepared. And our most recent delivery in the last month, um, we actually have had our completion rate go to 35%. Um, and, and it all had the content, the content and the activities in all of them are the same. There's no change. But what we've been doing, and some of what I've been doing, has been refining the um, interaction and connections. So again, a little bit about the iMOOC design. You can come back to these slides, look up my um, Network Teacher PD. That was my dissertation. Really, Network Teacher PD is another way of saying small massive or small open online courses um, and the community of Cree Athabasca University is is obviously known um, because our professors having been involved with it primarily Dr. Terry Anderson um, and now Dr. Martha Cleveland Innes and myself uh, Dr. Norm Vaughn the community of inquiry is a really good way of understanding education um, specifically uh, for MOOCs and I think if you take a look I'm going to back up by the one slide. I think our evidence is starting to show that if, if we design MOOCs of a high quality materials and high quality engagement, that's what the iMOOC has, uh, we can get very successful results. So, <clears throat> um, again, online teaching and learning, how does that fit in? So MOOCs were there, but online teaching and learning have been around well, a little bit longer than that. So, you know, what are the elements that make that different than a classroom teacher? Um, I spent 20 years teaching children, kin kindergarten to grade 12. Uh, that'd be grade uh, five-year-old, four-year-olds. I taught folk dance, phys ed, English, science, um, uh, social studies. I taught all of the subjects over my 17 years to kindergarten, computers, reading, all the way to high school. So I, I spent many years with different groups of children, different ages, and had lots of opportunities to try different things over my career as a K-12 teacher. Um, and, and online learning and teaching is different. Um, our physical distance is apart. Um, although technologies today, maybe we're not so apart. And when we talk, again, I went back to Community of Inquiry was one of the first in 2001 one of the first models that really did a good job of explaining what online learning um, has to focus on, teaching presence, social presence, cognitive presence. Um, and that actually came out of a model called the practical inquiry model. And you can see some of the top corners, um, private world, reflection, discourse, shared world. Those are things, the practical inquiry model is before the internet um, or very early on. Today, those are pretty standard kinds of things. But what makes good online learning? It isn't. It isn't the materials. You can find materials online for everything. It's not about that. It's about communication. And today, unlike in 2000, even 2005, 2007, 2010, we didn't have social media the way we do today. We have unlimited kinds of types of and brands of um, interactive communication methods that are free and open. Um, one thing I must say, I'm really committed to open educational resources and the movement. Um, I do publish in open journals to make sure it's read. I occasionally publish in closed. Um, but um, really, 
many of the courses, Telmuc, for example, uses only open educational resources. Um, you know, and again, my favorite kind of technology right now is Flipgrid. It's worked really good for student voice as well as my voice, quick to students. So you might want to take a look at that. But, you know, in online learning and teaching, we've had lots of changes in 20 years. Um, let's say a little bit more than 20 years since online learning started. So what is different with MOOC teaching and design? Well, some of my earliest work uh, in 2009 was around uh, teacher professional development social networking site called to learn together.ca. It basically was a very early version um, of Facebook like, um, ELG like. Um, you know, there's several other softwares. They're like, we, we could host videos. You can see there was membership groups, videos, and you can connect to other people. And that concept of putting interaction in a social space, in a place that people are going and have tools that allow them to connect. Um, for example, in a classroom, you can turn to your student beside you and have a conversation while the instructor is getting ready um, or perhaps answering a question of another student. You can interact. Um, and students, of course, choose where they sit and they sit between beside people that are have interesting interest to, or sorry, have common interests. And that's what social media, media sites um, allow us to do, social media. Uh, when I was with Curtin University, um, uh, this, this website's down right now. I don't know that we'll bring it back up. We actually created a learning commons where it was a complete social, social media website where um, you came in, the course was per persistent. It stayed there forever. You can come in and take it whenever you want. Um, and you make work your way through, uh, through the material, but it was in an ELG environment, <clears throat> which is similar to a Facebook environment. The key to these social environments is profiles of people, so people can find common interests. Um, I just need a lozenge because um, I've been outside so much, my vo voice is hoarse. Anyway, in here, in the, um, in, inside the Curtin Linen Commons, you can see we simply arrange the materials one week to the next. And on the side, lots of materials. On the right-hand side, you can see group activity, bookmarks, pin boards. This is before Pinterest, you know, um, and stuff like that. So making use of what students do. Um, another way, thing that I spent time on was MOOCification, taking a course that's being delivered on a campus and students that are online and providing them with a common space to speak, to talk. In fact, that was this course. It was called Professional, uh, sorry, Participating in the Digital Age. And, and it was content that was delivered from a course that teacher, uh, uh, student teachers had to take. Um, so that's a little bit of, of where I came from in terms of MOOCs. Um, another one I spent time on was Capt and it was given on Open to Study out of Australia, and it was about astronomy. And there we captured the lectures activities in a virtual, um, a virtual star environment, where they got to go into the. In some sense, it's a game. Was a game that they got to go in and had to had to do um, specific kinds of tasks to come up with answers. So it was really very close to what the classroom was. Sanjaya, Dr. Sanjaya mentioned learn to learn online. When I moved to Athabasca University, moved back because I'm from Canada. I went to Athabasca University to finish my first degree in 1987. So I took, I, I took online learning a long time ago. Um, but when I got to come back as a professor, one of the, you know, I already had a fair bit of experience in um, what was working in Oceania um, and, and, and in Australia with MOOCs and brought some of that back to learn to learn online, um, which is Athabasca University's longest running MOOC. We still offer it quite often. And then again, as Dr. Sanjay mentioned, our technology enabled learning MOOC, which is a collaboration with Commonwealth of Learning. 
we certainly would never have gone as far as we've been able to do in terms of supporting uh, educators around the world without our uh, our partners commonwealth of learning that is really um, doing an excellent job um, we were in uh, just, uh, we were in scotland at pcf9 in uh, september of 2019 and again when you meet people face to face you really understand that we have an impact in lots of different places of the world and that's very um, rewarding it's it's it, in in fact in the first four deliveries of the Telmuk, there was no, not one american i don't i don't even think there was one um many commonwealth countries and um all, very few canadians um this is delivered out this time in the fifth delivery um, because we promoted it more inside as a partial response to what teachers could do for COVID. We had a few more Canadians. I still don't think we had too many Americans, maybe a couple. So this really, our, our work is really with the Commonwealth, Asia, you know, Africa, India, the Caribbean, um, Oceania. So my last part, because I'm sure you have some questions, and uh, is really what is this experience of um, teacher experience of designing and teaching and really it comes back to what i started with connecting one to a hundred um some of my first advice very first advice to um uh school teachers at the beginning of COVID here in alberta and canada i had a, a niece who called what can i do what can i do i have 120 students in a biology class twice a week um how will i ever deal with it and i said well number one at 120 students you can't answer every question um, many questions would be the same you can't talk to every parent you don't have time in the week there's too much so you have to adopt this one to many one to hundreds that's scalability but what is that well that's one thing that's a tool it's easy to use but I, I put this one up. This is um, the networked um, learning, uh, network teacher, professional uh, learning framework. Basically, this concept that I designed way back then is that we put the activities in a social networking site where students have access to each other in ways on, online that they wouldn't if they were just, if they're only in an LMS. Right? They, they don't have access in the same way. The same the thing I kept hearing at Curtin University over and over again, students have a lot of time in the evenings and they want to communicate, work on assignments. So how can we help them? Social media was one way for them to connect with each other, you know? Um, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I still think some of the best professional development is done inside social networking sites. Presents some challenges because LMSs are not social networking sites, but profiles, ability to connect with others, these kinds of things, this concept of connecting to others is really um, the big one. So tell MOOC, how was it an X MOOC or an, an I, CX MOOC or what we've now evolved into an I MOOC? these my role was video lectures and summaries yes i played a role in the design of it obviously because uh, it was myself and another professor who designed the content um several years ago and the content's still valid today now that none of uh, whether we might have some more technology tools but that's not what this is about this is about using technology um in in ways to reach students but video lectures and summaries i played with both of those and in the early versions of the Talmud, um, I used to do weekly summaries. Not really worth it. Students, you know, there, was, there wasn't there was very much benefit of watching a video at the end of the week. There is benefit to being encouraged, motivated, um, surprised uh, in whatever way to do something at the beginning of a week. So I spent all my time since and still do with introduction videos, videos that motivate. And I played around with what kinds of things to do in there. Um, and I'll, I'll go back to that in a moment. In the iMOOC, our model 
is that there's three levels of instructors, of instructor presence. And that is the recorded videos and the content. That, that would be one set, uh, place where learners see the instructor. The inspirer, which is this role that I've played many, many times. And, and I continue to like uh, you know, to be doing that and trying different kinds of things in it. Um, again, motivation, inspire, try to inspire and encourage. And then we have facilitators in the MOOC, tutors, one to 250 students, sort of. And their job, their job um, is to connect students. That's it, to connect learners uh, with topics to make sure they don't miss each other. And the reason that they got to connect them is because we're in an LMS, not a social networking site. I think if we were in a social networking platform, again, um, private for an institution, we might have a little bit less need for that. But regardless, we're able to um, facilitate connections. And, and back to that mookification, um, you know, in, in the parallel delivery, what did the MOOC space, which is on the bottom, have to do with the 13-week on-campus space? It supported student interaction. That, that's all it did. Student conversation around the same materials, right? Many of the videos you can see online, if you YouTube my name, if you YouTube Telmook, You'll find lots of examples. Um, over the last couple of years, I've refined a bit where I often try to provide an analogy. Um, because I live on a farm and I am a rancher, farmer, uh, beside a professor, um, I have the outdoors. Um, so I have a whole field to go and, and, and entertain, encourage people. So you can see from my videos, I also live in a cold climate, Canada, and I'm well aware that Curtin in Australia and many places in, in uh, Africa and the Caribbean, they've never even seen snow. So I always make a, an attempt to jump out there and provide an interesting hook, catch for their attention, and then I provide them information to encourage people to stay and engage with the content. So, iMOOC Learning Design, three um, different levels of teaching presence. Again, we have the cognitive presence, which is the materials, and the social presence, which is our connecting. And that's how, um, really, we provide, um, well, I, I think, a very refined, high-quality, high-interactive, successful teacher experience in a MOOC platform, MOOC situation. And yeah, we have, we don't have 30,000 students. Um, we have what I would consider to be ah, normal MOOC size, 1,000 to 4,000, somewhere in that range, usually around 1,500 to 2,000. So um, again, to show you a little bit of what my life looks like just behind me on the field, outside my house, um, I have a farm where I raise buffalo, bison. Yeah, they're in Africa, they're buffalo. Cape buffalo in North America, they're the North American bison. And at the shoulder, he's taller than I am. Um, so this is my world that I try to bring learners in um, because there's a lot of analogies and crossovers between what happens in technology and education and agriculture. And many of the people I've found that are taking the MOOCs know about agriculture. So um, I find that very exciting. And, and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you everyone uh, for joining in uh, to in today's session from all over the world. Um, I, I do acknowledge that there are people from, from Canada who are participating uh, and, and people in Asia, in Africa and all, uh, everywhere people are coming in. Uh, but I would like to thank particularly the colleagues from University of Malaysia, Saba, those who have submitted their activities regularly. Thank you, Dr. Nathaniel, for sharing your experience with our, our participants. And uh, thank you. Bye-bye to everyone at this moment.